All right, guys. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? This is the man Dr. Cap, and welcome back to my channel. This is lecture three, and we are going to do vectors. In vectors, we are going to first understand how to take cross product. What is the geometric meaning of cross product, and how many dimensions do we require to evaluate this cross product? And then we are going to delve deeper, and we are going to understand that we can construct a triple type of product, and this triple triple product is also called as triple dot product. We can have triple vector product, but we are going to explicitly see that it has some geometric meaning when we are doing triple scalar product or triple dot product. And then we are going to invest some, you know, some time to understand what is determinant, how we can use the determinant technique in order to evaluate the vector product. And we are going to see some properties involving determinant. And then we are going to see a very important, you know, application of vector product, which is related to parallel piped. And this is some kind of, you know, parallelogram, but in the 3D space, it becomes parallel pipe because it has certain height. So we will going to see so many things in one video and we are trying to finish in time. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, guys, so we are going to do vector product and let us assume that we have two vectors, A vector and B vector, and we want, we want to uh, do the cross product. So in order to do the cross product, we are going to represent or we are going to write it as it is A cross B. So this is this can be written as A cross B, not X, but A B. So consider that I have something, let us say A is equal to something, some vector in the I direction or X direction. And maybe let us say I have B vector again in some kind of you know let us say j hat in the y direction then what will happen to it so i will just simply write that unit vector cross j hat now what is the result that we are going to get now the term that it is saying that it is a vector product it means that if i am going to do this app operation then i will get something related to vector so the thing is that you have to remember it that unlike the dot product we are in the vector product and therefore the resultant of two vectors if i am doing it cross product or vector product the resultant would be always a vector so i cross j means that i have this i and i am going to take j all right so whenever we are doing the cross product then it means that it is it is like that you are taking this axis and try to take this into j axis all right and this is theta and which is coming out to be 90 degree in that case therefore the resultant vector would be in such a way that it would be always something like z vector which is basically perpendicular to on these two axes all right so now since the coefficient of this i hat and j hat is one therefore i cross j would always be you know j hat or i can write it as k hat now it has some specific rule that i am going to talk about which you have already you know studied in class 11th that i have i hat j hat and k hat i am going to write it in terms of circle so if you move in this direction then all the quantities we are going to get in terms of a positive quantity all right so how we can do it therefore you can just say that i can pick two and i will get the resultant one i cross j is giving you k hat or z hat similarly i can write j cross k hat i'm going to get i hat and again j cross k will going to give j cross k is i hat all right now j cross k oh sorry about it now k cross i i'm going to get j hat now, if you will move in this direction, then we are going to always get negative direction. So, if you move in anti-clockwise direction, the resultant would be negative quantity. So, it is simply simply write as that i cross k is equal to minus j. Therefore, we have arrived in a very certain case that whenever you know this product is non-vanishing, when you have two certain components which are not parallel to each other it means that if you have two vectors then there is no way you can rotate it onto this one so let us say this is i hat and this is i hat because you have two vectors in the same direction or maybe in parallel direction minus i hat then you are always going to get zero because there is no way you can rotate it into itself therefore any vector which is parallel to each other or anti-parallel to each other the resultant would be always a zero all right so you have to understand this one so whenever we have this cross product then we are always specific specify that okay pick the uh pick the other one all right so if i have i have i then try to see what is j the simple example is let us say i have two i hat plus three j hat and i'm going to cross with let us say four k hat or four k hat plus five i hat so what i can do is that two into four is eight i cross k 
I cross K, I'm going to write it over here. I'm going to see 2 into 5, which is 10. And I'm going to write I cross I. And then again over here, 3 into 4 is 12. So this is this multiplication is same same as you know a plus b into c plus d. You can just have to do it, but you have to see the order. If you can, because you have seen that if you are changing the order, the resultant would be pick would pick any negative sign. So therefore, order is important. Now similarly, I have three into five, which is fifteen, and j cross i. Now you can you know write the result. Now this would obviously vanish. I cross k, i cross k would be minus of j, and this j cross k, j cross k would be you know plus i and then j cross i j cross i again in the negative direction minus k so you see that you will get something a kind of plane in 3d space so it has certain you know properties that i am going to you know show you that if you have considered a vector and this b vector although you have considered let us say a could be i hat and obviously in order to non in order to get non vanishing result either it would be j hat or k hat Therefore, the resultant would be always in k hat. i cross j is k. So, if a is coming towards b, then it would be, you know, k hat. So, if I am just saying that I have to, you know, um, enclose it. Therefore, I have to, you know, stick a vector which is going to be, have some kind of rotation. So, suppose that if a is attached with something which is perpendicular to this one, therefore, I have to rotate in this way so that a will come towards b. So, a cross b will be a is i hat, then j hat, then it is coming out to be k hat. Therefore, the vector product have to very much specify that vector product always needs three dimensional space. So, it requires at least three dimension, minimum three dimension. Unlike the dot product, it does require just only one space. On the, on the other hand, the vector product is associated with rotation of the vector onto each other. And then it requires minimum of three dimensions to, you know, have some non-vanishing result. So that is the most important point that you have to consider. Now, there are several properties associated with. Now, what are the properties? They are very interesting properties that I'm going to discuss over here. The interesting properties, first of all, that if I have, I have taken A cross B is never be going to equal as B cross A because it will always pick a negative sign. So, this is called anti-commutative. Anti-commutative. If it is not picking any negative sign, then we can just say that commutative. But if it is picking a negative sign, therefore, it becomes anti-commutative. The magnitude would not alter just the direction would be uh, opposite now you may also see that a i have written a i have written a and then b cross sorry b plus c and then what you will what you will get it's kind of you know again a cross b plus a cross c type of scenario now in another respect what you will get if i have a dot b cross c so now this type of this type of product is also called as a scalar triple product all right why because you see that a b cross c is always giving you some kind of vector and when we have any vector then we are going to take a dot with this and then the end result would be some kind of number so it becomes a scalar so this is also called a scalar triple product or vector dot product so if i am taking this one then i can have the anti result when if you are changing the order of the cross product as you can you're going to use this relation number one and you have seen this one. Two. now one important thing i would like to you know uh, discuss that whenever you are taking a cross b you have to mind that that if the resultant whatever the resultant would be there this resultant vector would always be perpendicular to these vectors so c vector is always be going to perpendicular to this one a and b so it never happens that this c vector won't be perpendicular to this one they will be always perpendicular to these guys all right now the uh, again the interesting thing is coming that consider you have you have taken something like a cross b cross c now this is always cross there is no any dot product so this is not this is never going to be equal if you are taking the cross product of a cross b and then you are going to take the c product because the components are always the components matters first all right so which you are which quantities you are doing the operation first and then you are doing the second 
unlike the vector unlike a dot product what you can do is that i can take b cross c and i can have a dot over here and the same result would be b cross c and then dot over here there is no point of there is no problem but over here this is one case another case would be that a cross b cross c will not be equal to b cross c and then you are crossing with a again the direction would be changed and therefore the resultant would always be changed all right so you have to you know very much cautious that what is the order of these vectors while doing cross product all right all right so let's get with another you know interesting definition with the cross product that if i have a cross b and i would willing to take a magnitude of it then i will because a cross b if i'm not taking any magnitude it means that it is now becoming a vector kind of point ready so in order to get some magnitude what we have to do we can get in terms of angle that magnitude of a magnitude of b and it will always give you sine theta so what does it mean it implies that if i have i cross j hat then the magnitude of i magnitude of j and then sine theta we know that this i hat and there is a z hat all right and the angle between them is 90 degrees so sine theta 90 degrees is 1 so i the magnitude of unit vector is 1.1 .1, which is 1 so that's why i cross i i cross j is always be the magnitude of them is always going to be 1 i am talking about magnitude i am not talking about the vector product all right so i cross j is the magnitude of i cross j is always 1 now similarly i can find out that i cross you know uh, i cross i would become i and i it is one but the sine theta because theta becomes zero in this case because i is overlapping with i therefore the resultant would be zero hence whenever we are going to take a vector we are going to always emphasize that you you do not have to take the parallel or anti parallel vectors you have to always pick the other ones all right so this is one of the rule now considering that how we can take advantage of you know doing the cross product let us say i have a vector and a is making with like a i1 a2 j hat and a3 k hat all right and i have another vector b b1 i hat b2 j hat and b3 k hat now these are always part of you know r3 and they are representing some kind of plane guide structure in the three dimensional space now somebody is willing to take a cross b that okay i have the plane and then i want to rotate the plane onto each other then what will happen how are we going to take it if i'm going to multiply term by term then it will be going to take a lot of time therefore in order to do the multiplication we have a trick in our bucket that it goes like that okay you have to just write over here i hat j hat and k hat and then you have to close with this line and this line this, this line basically representing our determinant or writing matrices and taking the determinant now you have to write first a so the first one so this is the first row the second row would be this guy and then write the coefficient of i hat so i hat coefficient a1 j would be a2 k would be a3 now there comes b therefore i have b1 b2 b3 now if you don't know how to take a determinant you have to be you know very uh, cute or a little bit cautious with this thing because if i am considering let us say i hat it is my first one then i won't consider any of the adjacent rows all right so this won't be considered so what we have to do we are left with only this one all right so i am going to take this a to b3 minus then minus and b to a3 now you can you know use a to b3 or b3 a2 because they are scalar products and there is nothing and this is scalar product is multiplying with i hat so it is now a vector quantity so you can just see that a cross b is yielding a vector product all right a vector kind of quantity now when we are picking this j let me choose a different color for that let us say you are considering this one so again the adjacent row and this won't be considered again all right so what you are left with it you will left with this thing and this thing understood so if i am taking j hat so you have to remember it this will come as minus j hat and then i'm going to start with a1 b3 a1 b3 and minus of b1 a3 understood and then if i am if i'm going to you know, take the k hat then i'm going to again use k hat with the plus sign and i have i'm not going to take any of this one 
all right i have only this guy and this guy so a1 b2 minus b1 a2 so this quantity is basically yielding a vector type of quantity which is spanning all over the space like it is it is having quantity like i hat j hat and k hat with the scalar type of coefficient now some of them you can say that i am going to choose a two product two vectors which is in a two dimension let us i am considering that there is only i hat and j hat and there is no any k hat so i am going to say that okay all right so these two vectors have a3 and b3 would be zero then what would be the result i can always you know you don't have to do anything you can you know this one you can just pick a3 is equal to zero and this one zero so over here it says that b3 zero cancel a3 zero cancel b3 cancel a3 cancel all right what is only left with it is that you have k hat a1 b2 minus b1 a2 so it simply says that you have any plane in two dimensions let us say this is the plane then if you take any rotation the plane would have the resultant vector in k hat direction so k hat would be always perpendicular to i hat and j hat so this is the you know interesting idea about the how you're going to take the determinants and so on now i'm going to talk about some properties of the determinants so i hope that this is clear to you and let us jump towards how to take what are the properties of the determinant now properties of determinant let me use a different color properties of a determinant if i'm going so fast you can let me know that i'm going to so i'm going so fast you can please comment and try to subscribe my channel and share to your friends all right so i have the determinant let us say i have a b and let us say c and d it is called two cross two type of matrices i'm going to take a determinant then this is the way i would take a d minus b c that's all it is nothing to it is nothing to worry about it right now now we are going to take three cross three let us say i have a b c d e f g h i all right i am what i'm going to do is that if i'm going to interchange this position to this position then it is always going to choose take negative sign so i will have d e f a b c g h i so interchanging one row to another row or you can just choose to you know, interchange with this one it will always pick a negative sign again i'm going to take you know choose this one so it will now again take negative sign so negative negative becomes positive d e f g h i and a b c but if you interchange the rows the resultant of this resultant would not be you know have any effect the resultant determinant is independent of how you're going to change your rows and all these things. That's why it is only simply picking a negative sign. Ensure that your outcome is not is independent of is remain independent of changing the rows and all these things. Now, one of the interesting things is that consider your one of the rows vanishes. Let us say A, B, C becomes zero, then determinant will automatically zero. All right. Now, if you I can write A, B, C in terms of D, E, F, let us say all the elements A, B, C basically equal to D, E, F, then again, although they are non-zero, but the determinant is always going to be zero. So therefore, these are the kind of thing which represents the degeneracy. It means that something is basically the same thing. You are not generating anything. So they are basically degenerate. Therefore, any two rows either one of the rows is zero or any two rows are same or you are multiplying with some kind of constant and you can get another row then the determinant would be zero so i can if i can get a b c by multiplying with some x d e f then a, x is a real quantity then again it the determinant would be zero now if i can get a b c by doing x of d e f and some other you know linear combination of y and y is again a real number g h i then if this happens then this is called the linear dependency it means that you can linearly expand one of the rows into two other rows now if this happens linear dependency all right and this is very crucial when we are going to do the quantum mechanics thing so this is a very important thing you are getting that if any of the rows can be expressed in terms of two other rows as a linear dependent quantity then this outcome is again zero so these are the you know very much case of you know degeneracy that you are not generating anything they are basically the same thing and therefore you have to be you know very precautious about these things now one of the interesting properties again i can discuss is that let us say i have a b c 
and I can d plus some t of a, b plus some sorry, uh, e plus some t of b. Some t is some kind of you know real quantity or uh, something like that. And similarly, e plus t times c and g h i. Then this is basically equal to nothing but a b c, the determinant itself. It will it won't change anything. G h i. So whatever the outcome that you are getting of this one will be same as this guy. All right, it is not zero. Sorry. Because A, B, C are not linearly dependent, or neither they are zero, or neither you can you can not you know using some any quant, uh, quantity you will get something. All right. So one of the you know geometric meaning that you can see that let us say I have two parallel lines. All right. So consider uh, y is equal to m x plus c is a equation of line. All right. So one of the line this one, and again you are having another line y is equal to let us say m one and m two x plus c c2 or c1 and so, so on now since they are parallel therefore the slope is not going to change m1 is equal to m2 therefore i can just write you know x plus 2y is equal to something 6 and 2x plus 4y is equal to let us say 12 you can see that just multiplying with 2 i have got this one so they are basically if i can you know represent in terms of matrix that 2 and 4 then if you take the determinant 4 minus 4 is going to be zero it even care about this one whatever this one but if it is there then it simply give you the determinant will automatically become zero so that is a very interesting stuff that you are actually getting that okay what is the you know sense of determinants all right now we are going to do a, a case where uh, there is another geometric importance emerges is called parallelopipede parallelopipede now, in order to first discuss this parallel pipe, you have to remember that this parallel pipe we are talking about in 3D. On the basic version of this parallel pipe, you have already you know, studied in your class 9th, 8th, 9th, 10th, is a parallelogram. All right, parallelogram. So, I hope you know what is the parallelogram. So, this is if either two sides are parallel to each other, then it is a parallelogram. It doesn't care that, okay, these two are, you know, have to be equal to each other. So, a, B, C, and D. How I go, how I am going to find the area of A, B, and C, D. Uh, sorry, A, B, C, D. All right. The challenge is to find the area. I have to find the area of parallel pipe. How we can do it? So first of all, I am going to divide it into two, one, two, and three regions. One reason becoming a rectangle, and this reason. Uh, are dividing as a right angle triangle so let us say it is m and this is n so because you know d and c are parallel and in a you know same line therefore a m sorry b n and d m d m is perpendicular to a b and b n is going to perpendicular to c d therefore the length d m and b n is going to be same on the other hand this a m is also going to be same as uh, C N. You can use you can you know use the congruence triangle congruence and you can easily show that because this and this are equal. These are parallel lines. A D and B C are parallel lines. Therefore, this and this angle is also going to be same because they are opposite to each other. And this is ninety degree. This is ninety degree. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent. And congruence means that these two triangles are basically the same. Therefore, A M and C N is going to be same. Now, in on the other hand, we have rectangle. Therefore, M B is equal to dn and again i have dm is equal to pn so how we can find the area so in order to find the area what i can do is that first right angle triangle of amd the area would be the base which is am and then dm the hyper sorry the altitude plus the the rectangle area of rectangle which is going to be mb and times the perpendicular which is dm or bn you can just say and over here again i can use b and i can use b n as d m no problem with that and c and i can write just only a m i would like to you know reduce our reduce my work so i am going to use this d m is common in every side therefore i'm going to use d m half of a m plus m b plus d m is there and then a m by 2. now this a m a m by 2 is going to give you d a m plus m b now what is am plus mb am this side and this is mb therefore you will get dm times dm times ab all right 
So this is the area of parallelogram. All right. Now I'm going to do a trick. Considering that this angle, obviously this is a parallelogram, therefore it will have some angle, let us say this is theta, then I can always calculate this dm. What is the going to be dm? Now since adm is right angle triangle, therefore I can use sine theta, sine theta would become dm over hypotenuse which is ad. All right. So I can write dm as ad sine theta and this is ab. Now I'm going to use the vector. Now since this is this is everything is written in terms of you know magnitude, so I can write that okay, this length can be represented as a vector quantity and AD as a vector quantity because DM is again gone. I don't care about it. Therefore, AB and AD are two vectors. So I can write these are actually magnitude. So magnitude of AD, magnitude of AB, and sine theta. Now I have written right, right now that if two vectors are there and it is there is sine theta, then basically what happens is that you will get AB cross AD. So this is, you know, you can you consider AD cross AB or AB cross AD. It depends on you because I, we have not explicitly said that, okay, this is the way you have to do. But now this is, you know, in X and Y axis. So I am saying that, okay, we have to take, you know, plus sign. Therefore, just consider that it will be, you know, in your, uh, it is coming out of the screen. Therefore, it is in jet hat. So I'm going to write it as X cross Y, which is AB cross AD. So I can simply write it as AB cross AD. All right. Now this area. Now you can see that area of a parallelogram is some kind of number, but it's associated with vector. And the vector is they're going to take its Z hat. So you have to always understand that whenever you do an area, area becomes a vector quantity. All right. So basically parallelogram is a plane in the two dimension, in the two dimension, in the two dimensional, like let's say X and Y. Therefore, the area is area of the plane will always have the plane as well as it has some normal. And the normal of the of a uh, normal of anything which is living in X, Y is becoming as a Z quantity. So normal is always coming out of the screen. All right. It's always perpendicular to the X and Y. Therefore, area vector is going to become a B designer. Or you can just say that area vector, because again, we are talking about the magnitude. I am just say that a B cross a D. All right. And then everything is done. Now, when we try to, so we have found out that what is the volume? What is the area? Now we have to consider the volume. All right. So how a parallelogram will be will look like in three dimensional space. So we have seen that let's consider that our X and Y in this direction. So I have made like this. So this is, you know, X and Y considered over here X. And let us say this is, you know, Y they're perpendicular to each other. Therefore, the area, there will be area and there will be perpendicular to it. All right. So our another another thing is perpendicular to it. But when we are considering any parallel pipe, parallel pipe has, you know, three things in the three dimension, it would become like this. So something is parallel to this one. So this is another vector. Let us say this is a vector. This is B vector. And this guy is C vector. So this is enough. A, B and C. Now you can just sketch the parallel to C vector. Again, this is parallel to C vector. This is parallel to C vector. And you may join this guy over here, just like cuboid. You can just see. So it has some structure like this. So now I have before I had A and B, now I am using the C vector to shape it as a 3D thing. So we have the 3D and if I am going to take A cross B, then what happens is we are going to get a normal vector like this, a perpendicular, which is which have to be perpendicular to this guy. Now you may see over here that there is a C vector. And I don't know anything about this perpendicular, how we can, how we can find out. We can just say that there will be some kind of, you know, uh, angle, which is making with the perpendicular vector, this one. I can take again, in this case, sine theta, sine theta is basically, uh, this quantity, sorry, I cannot take sine theta because it is a zero and from zero to this one is basically representing a height. So height can be calculated as cos theta is equal to h over hypotenuse, which is your c vector with magnitude. So h becomes c cos theta. So what is the volume? What the volume says that you have the area a cross b and simply multiply with area with, with the height, which is basically your c cos theta. Now, 
we have one vector we have another vector and everything volume is not a, a vector quantity volume is just a volume of anything it does not care about in which direction we are talking about so volume is a scalar quantity therefore it must be scalar now the thing is that it is you know it is you know becoming a proof that there is a cos theta and we know that a dot b is given giving as a b cos theta so a cross b have some another vector so d let us say a cross b giving you d c cross c d cos theta c d cos theta representing as c dot d therefore i can just simply write it as c dot a cross b now c dot a cross b is giving you the volume of this palopite so this triple dot product or triple scalar product is basically representing you a, a volume of a parallel pipe. So anything, any, it can become a, some kind of you know, parallel pipe like this. You can just expand it. And what would be the volume? The volume is given by the cross product of the basis and then you can have to multiply with height. And this volume is becoming an scalar quantity and this is how we can write it. So either you can take this uh, magnitude or you can you know of it so i can just write over here c dot a cross b it will automatically take c a cross b magnitude and then cos theta all right so and then and always think of it that this cos theta is basically another vector with the perpendicular height all right now you can you know write it as a circular because you know we have chosen this one you can choose any other plane therefore we can have you know it can rotate in a circle so the thing is you can do with the with the following thing let us say i just make sure that let us say i have you know a cross b so i am going to write first a and then b and then it is basically making with c dot product so if this product that a cross b Either I am writing over here, if it is positive, all right, you, just you have to make sure that this is positive. Then I can just uh, use the cyclic process and I can just say that, okay, B cross C and then I'm going to take the dot. And similarly, C cross A and then taking a dot will give you the same result. So this is how you can take any, you can pick any plane and you can do the calculation and the end result would be same because you have to understand that no matter which plane you are going to take, the volume is not going to change because it's not a cross product it's a scalar product that's why this is called a cyclic quantity so you can use to rotate the things around it therefore that is why because we are talking about the volume you can pick any of the faces you do the cross product and then dot with the, its height and then you will end up with the same result all right but again you cannot do this one like let us say if i am taking about a cross b dot c vector then i cannot just say that b cross a dot c no it will pick another negative sign all right it is not it never equal to this guy always it becomes anti-commutative all right so what does it mean it means that when you are doing this one this perpendicular height is in this side all right so it is not a part of some volume it becomes you know off the volume all right so you have to be very cautious with the direction of the cross product that's why it is better to use you know just take a magnitude i don't care about it because again in the end of the day i am doing the scalar product so everything is fine for me all right so i hope this is fine this is this this you know chapter is clear to you this is a very short lecture on the cross product and once we are done with all the basic things now in from the lecture four we are going to de delve deeper and we are going to take that you know suppose you have a plane so we are talking have given you some flavor of the plane that what happens with the parallelogram parallelogram is a kind of a plane in living in x and y or you can choose any of the uh, and the plane and you can have always a normal vector because we are talking about the area so a plane will always have a normal to it all right so you can draw any kind of plane for an example you can draw this plane or maybe this plane so these are basically representing a normal vector so the real definition of plane is associated with the normal vector so we are going to see that how we can construct a equation of plane and associated mathematics we are going to do so for now i'm leaving and kindly subscribe to my channel and share to your friend this is the minor cap signing out